What's up you guys, it's Cody coming back at you with another video and we finally got the heavy duty 16 inch drop bulletproof hitch, okay? I've been wanting this for so long and I'm super excited that I finally got it. It's uh, just another one of the steps to getting a trailer or toy hauler for the truck. We still gotta do a re-gear, I've been calling around, I got some quotes. Uh, everywhere is really busy, I'm trying to find someone that can get it done sooner. But we got the trailer hitch and I'm probably really dirty right now because I just got off work and I just did some welding on the truck which I will also show you guys in a second. But but that is what this video is pretty much about real quick before we get into it if this is your first time here please make sure you hit that subscribe button hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and check out nohifastapparel.com i really appreciate it and let's get into the video all right you guys so here it is our massive 16 inch drop heavy duty bulletproof trailer hitch we did get the upgrade version which has a two and five eighths ball a two inch ball and the sway bar attachment okay so it was extra to get that but i definitely did not want to go cheap on that or cheap out on it i got the sway bar attachment so we can make sure we got a nice steady uh stable towing uh experience so there it is you guys this thing is freaking massive let me see let me show you guys how big it really is i mean yeah it looks big here but check this out look at this thing look how big this thing is massive my whole torso like i don't know can you see look at this thing's huge and it's about 70 or 80 pounds it's pretty heavy nice and heavy duty super excited for that so for those of you that are curious this thing does have a really good towing capacity towing capacity the two inch ball has up to 12,000 pounds the two and five sixteenths has 22,000 pounds which that's the side we're probably going to end up needing for a toy hauler or or a travel trailer that we're looking into getting so you got up to 22,000 pounds on that you know i don't even really know the towing capacity on my truck with this lift and i don't plan on getting anything that's going to be close to that weight i'm looking at like i said in you know my previous video i'm thinking a 25 or 30 footer we're looking around probably maybe a 5,000 pound trailer or something like that nothing too crazy so we are more than good with this hitch shouldn't be an issue and like i said i did some welding on the truck let me show you guys what that is by the way this is a two and a half inch uh two and a half inch tr uh, hitch insert because my hitch receiver is a two and a half inch so with my last hitch which was a two inch i had a two and a half by two square adapter so the adapter went in the hitch receiver first and then the trailer hitch went into the adapter so because my truck is a two and a half inch receiver adapter so that's two and a half inch right there let me go ahead and show you guys the welding that i did it came out really freaking good man this hitch ain't going anywhere by the way this hitch was already welded on here it wasn't bolted on i bought this truck with this hitch receiver and this hitch receiver was welded on there i think i'm pretty sure the previous owner towed with it I know he had a trailer when I bought the truck he had a trailer but he also had a brand new truck they had just got so I don't know if he got the brand new truck and the trailer at the same time and never towed with this but I know he had a trailer I think he towed with it so I know it could hold up but I didn't like how the welds looked as a welder myself I just was not happy with the welds that were on it and I feel like I could do better so I put some nice welds on here check it out we should not have any issue with this these will hold nicely check this out see if i can get you some good view good lighting there we go look at that four pass now there is some inside passes too there was one pass you could see it has like a like a flared bevel is what this is called the hitch receiver is flat and the frame is rolled so it has that flare bevel so we do have one or two passes first on the inside underneath all these welds to bring it flat and then i stacked four passes on here so we got plenty of tie-in plenty of penetration on the hitch receiver and then up high enough plenty of penetration on the frame you can see this thing is not going anywhere they're not the most beautiful welds i've done better and i've definitely seen better but i know these are more than good enough they're gonna hold just fine and i have no worry now this is the back side so this is kind of let me focus here this is kind of the pushing side so when i hit when i break and the trailer behind me the force is coming in to break for breaking that's where this strength is going to come in now for the pulling side again i wish i took pictures or showed you guys the old welds but i didn't so here's the inside nice again uh, there's a couple passes on the inside underneath these three passes so there's probably two passes underneath here and then i have a uh, three stringers on top nice uh, three stringer bead again plenty tied into the uh, hitch receiver and plenty tied into the frame so other side looks pretty much the same pretty much just as good 
So, yeah, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> so that's pretty much that. We got the hitch receiver welded on there nicely. We got the new trailer hitch. I just need a trailer plug, which again, I already have the wiring for it because I used to have the seven pin trailer plug on this truck. And I, uh, it was, it was drilled. It, uh, there was a hole drilled in my stock bumper and the trailer plug was mounted in it. So in order to take the stock bumper off and put this bumper on, I had to take that plug out. And then since I didn't have a trailer or tow anything at the time, I just taped up all the wiring. As a matter of fact, I'll show you, I think, I'm pretty sure this is it right here. This is all my uh, trailer plug wiring. Each individual one is taped up and then the whole thing's taped up and zip tied up here to be out of the way. But all I need to do is wire in these wires into a seven pin trailer plug and I'm pretty much ready to plug in. I do already have a trailer break, uh, trailer break in the truck, so we should be good there. I just need that plug and the re-gear. So let's throw this hitch in and see how it looks on the back of the truck. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you've ever seen, but let's do it anyways. <laughs> Sorry, Diesel, don't mean to disturb you. I'm just gonna set this right here. So there you have it. The beast of a trailer hitch is on. And I think it looks freaking awesome on here anyways, even with, without even towing with it, just having it there, man, looks freaking sweet. I love this truck, look at this thing. Maybe it's not everyone's cup of tea, but I don't care, I love it. Look at that beast. Love it. Looks freaking sweet. Get another view over here. I love it. So yeah, there it is again. Another step closer to getting a toy hauler, tray hauler. Realistic toy trailer or trailer hauler. I think that's what I said. <laughs> Another step closer to getting either a toy hauler or a travel trailer. So uh, it's probably honestly realistically at least a couple months out before I get one. I still, I don't want to get a trailer before I do the re-gear. I know me and if I get the trailer before the re-gear, I know I will tow without the proper gearing a, f a few times or I'll put off re-gearing it. I'll just, uh, it's fine, it's fine. I'll get it done eventually. I, I know me. So I want to get the gearing done before I get that trailer and do any damage that doesn't need to be done. So. Uh, Re-gear is definitely next. The trailer plug, the seven pin plug won't take long. Nothing, nothing crazy. A few minutes and what, $10 for a plug or something. So no big deal. That'll get done too. But we're getting there. Also another update review you guys on these track bars. I'm so happy with these track bars. I'm so happy that I finally have. Oh, I slipped. <laughs> I did slip right now. But anyways, I'm super happy with these track bars. I love how they look. They look freaking awesome under the truck and they made a huge difference on driving the truck. The truck just feels so much more planted to the ground. There is just like almost no more vibration in the truck when I accelerate. It used to sound like the mirrors were gonna fall off. And now with these track bars, it's just so much more solid. So, you know, that should help with towing too, I would think. I, you know, all that downward force we're gonna have in the back uh, with the trailer and all the extra weight and stuff. I think these are just gonna really help stabilize everything. The truck, unfortunately, when I bought it did not have any. That's just is what it is. And when I put the lift on, they didn't even mention it to me. I had people on YouTube telling me that I need them. I bought them. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you guys, because I do love them. Another thing I wanted to touch base on, and I think I'm gonna make a whole video on this, you guys, because I've had some people ask me, I've had a lot of people commenting on my video where I said the Super Chips might be better than the Hydra because of the issues I was having with the Hydra. And I want to clarify again, I think I said in my last video, but when I took all the tunes off the Hydra, as you guys recommended, and re-downloaded all the tunes to the Hydra and put it back on the truck, I've now been driving the truck for a few weeks and have not had any random codes that pretty much fixed it. I still definitely recommend the Hydra over the Super Chips. I want to make that clear. And like I said, I'll probably make a whole video on it just because there's some people watching that video that kind of thought that I was saying the Super Chips is better. And even in that video, even with the issues I was having with the Hydra, I would still recommend the Hydra to most people over the Super Chips. I was having issues with mine in particular, but I still would have told people, go with the Hydra, it's better. You probably won't have the issues I am, or maybe whatever, I was having the issues for whatever reason. Now I know what they are. I still would have recommended it. Now that it's even better, 
and I drove for a while with the Super Chips and now I'm back on the Hydra. The power difference is insane. The abilities with the Hydra, you know, low idle, high idle, no start and all that stuff, switching on the fly. I, I recommend the Hydra highly over the Super Chips. Probably make a video on that. And then other than that, we do have some stuff I need to do to the truck soon, which is I still need to tint my back window. Uh, if you guys remember, I shattered my back window on accident and I had the uh, tinted back window, tint matching the sides, and I had the no half ass decal. So we got to replace, we have zero tint. So I need to get that tinted. I need to throw my no half ass decal back on and my subwoofer is out on the truck. So the audio shop, I'm pretty sure does tint. I'll probably make a video getting a new subwoofer and getting the back window tinted and we'll throw that decal on. Again, that'll be another video for another time. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Again, please hit that like button if you did. Leave a comment down below. Check out nohalfassapparel.com. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys on the next video.